Hey everyone, am I finally here? I'm having, yeah, there we go. I've been having so many technical issues with, uh, uh, make sure, hi. I've uh, had so many technical issues. Oh no, this, okay, there we go. I'm, I'm getting messages that I'm live. Good, I can see myself live. We are on, can I, uh, let's see, can I work things? Let's see if you see that. Thank you, yes, I'm getting hearts. Can you hear me? You can hear me okay? Good, okay. We're rocking and rolling finally. Hey everyone, I just knew it. Uh, it was just so, Facebook was so janky today. I just knew I was gonna have problems. So thank you for sticking in there. Everyone can see me now, are we good? We're, we're looking good. Uh, today we're talking about, do you know how old your turkey is? And that might be an important thing. Uh, plus, I've got a special treat for you way back for, oh, look at all those hearts, that's good. Uh, I've got a special treat for you today. I pulled something way back out of my video vault that you are not gonna believe. So it's Tuesday Turkey Talk Live today. Every Tuesday at noon Eastern time, we're together. And you know what? If it's not noon and it's not Tuesday, uh, then you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and uh, register for my message alert system, webcookingclasses.com slash live, and you will get the 15 minutes before alert whenever I go live, because throughout the holidays, I've been popping up everywhere. Every time I think of something cool or new that I really wanna share with you, that's when I'm popping up live. And that's because we're all carefree cooks, right? We love our cooking. We create our own recipes. We bring family and friends together, especially this time of year, right? We learn every time we cook. We define our own cooking styles because we practice pro methods and we love our cooking, especially this time of year. It's, it's just the most, perhaps the most exciting cooking time of the year because you do bring all your friends and family together. Oh, and also if you're looking for past episodes of Tuesday Talk Live, go to Pinterest, go to Instagram. They're all cataloged there for you. So hi everyone, uh, we're getting together. Are you cooking for the holidays? I know it's just Thanksgiving in the US and you know, I guess we owe a little apology to all our international friends because we go crazy about Thanksgiving here. <laughs> but look, I want to talk about all the holidays. So no matter what you're celebrating from now through the end of the year, through New Year's Eve, we're going to talk about all these things. So it's just, it's such a great time to gather people, right? <clears throat> friends and family around the table. And it always reminds me of the great benefits of cooking skills. You know, when, when you really enjoy your cooking, when you become a carefree cook and you just love the process of cooking, that's why I bristle so much when people to ask me about the Instapot or the sous vide stick or any of those things because I just feel like they take the joy out of cooking. But this time of year, when the kids are in the kitchen with you, when, when grandma is, you know, you're bringing out grandma's pie recipe, when you see relatives you haven't seen before, they bring different dishes. It's just, if you love to cook, you love this time of year, right? No matter how many people you're hanging out with. So I want to help you with all these tips and ideas throughout the holidays so that you can have the best holiday ever, that you're not stressed out about it, uh, so that you become part of uh, the, the celebration and not feel like the caterer. And last week we talked a lot about proper portioning, about uh, how much you buy yields, how much is cooked after trim loss and cooking loss yields, how many portions portions you're going to be able to serve your people and the shopping list goes backward. How many people do I have? How many raw portions, uh, weight, total weight, and then what I'm going to buy. So it, it's really, it's really cool that we can put these ideas together. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone, because we're going to help you with all these turkey tips today that are going to help you have the best turkey ever. So all this, the, the bringing friends and family together, all this idea of years past and, and, uh, 
uh, uh, old family recipes. I went looking for something in my video vault. Now, I started filming uh, cooking classes in 2008, more than 10 years ago. So I have tons and tons of footage. And when I say my video vault, I have a stack of hard drives uh, that are now one terabyte each, I think. But back then, they, were, <laughs> they weren't even that big. So I went sifting through all my old hard drives and I was looking for one thing in particular, a Thanksgiving event that I had done years ago. And I was so glad I found it because I really wanted to share it with you. When I owned my cooking school, before all this carefree cooking, before web cooking classes even started, and I was teaching the cooking school, uh, the local news station came to me and they wanted me to do a bit, a story uh, for Thanksgiving for people. So I wanted to share this with you. Nobody has seen this in 10 years and it put a Thanksgiving smile on my face and hopefully early Chef Todd uh, will put a smile on yours. So check this out. Well, no doubt you, like so many others, are trying to find ways to trim costs over the holidays, but giving up that Turkey ham and all the fixings can be a hard pill to swallow. Tonight, our Sharon Taswell met up with Chef Todd Moore to show you how you can afford a frugal feast. Get ready to heat up that oven this holiday season and tantalize your taste buds. Even though money may be tight, it can be done. Go ahead and scour through your sale ads and clip your coupons, but think of it differently. You don't have to skimp on quality and make a cheaper meal, just a less expensive one. Chef Todd Moore shows us how. Don't cook so much. The key, healthy portions. Are you the kind of person that if you're serving 10 people, you buy 10 white potatoes and you buy 10 sweet potatoes and you buy 10 pounds of spinach and you buy 10 pounds of too much. It's too much. The average human stomach is about a quart. This can't fit. <laughs> Both of those, just by logic. To help figure out how much food we need, Chef Todd says planning is the most important step before you buy. Your cooking for your holiday meal doesn't begin in the kitchen, it begins with a calculator. He says no one's going to eat a whole sweet potato and a whole baked potato in addition to the meats and other fixings. Check out this analogy. Our tennis ball is going to be about two to three ounces of mashed potatoes. Our baseball is going to be about three ounces of stuffing and our checkbook about four ounces of cooked meat. So your baseball tennis ball checkbook plate should wind up looking like this. About four ounces is appropriate for adults about two ounces, two to three ounces of stuffing, two to three ounces of mashed potatoes. This is an appropriate plate for adults. So get out that calculator. If you're serving 10 people and they only get two ounces each of potatoes. Two ounces times 10 people is 20 ounces. That's what you need. Here's another tip. He says, don't buy a whole turkey. Buy turkey breast. This makes it so much more easy to estimate your four ounces per person. Remember the portion size because a portion size of about a checkbook will save you your checkbook. He reminds us we don't want to go cheaper this holiday season. We just want to spend less money on it. So let's tally up the price for feeding 10 people. The old fashioned way, 10 potatoes, 10 sweet potatoes, a whole turkey and a whole lot of stuffing comes up to about $67. Now, Chef Todd's way of proportioning exactly the same food, just less. That comes up to $24. That's a savings of $43. And that's without coupons. I'm Sharon Taswell, NBC 17 News. Chef Todd also recommends giving people prepared plates to help control their portions and maybe you'll even have room for some dessert. You can find more cooking tips by Chef Todd Moore and find other holiday financial tips on our website. Just go to mync.com, type in the keyword holidays. No. Classic, huh? <laughs> Classic Chef Todd. Um, it, it, what, a checkbook? The, the uh, a portion, the size of your checkbook will save you. Does anybody have a checkbook <laughs> anymore? I thought that was so funny. It's almost like it should have been black and white with streakiness. But it, I was making the same point that I'm trying to make to you this year, 10 years ago. I've been saying the same thing for 10 years. I don't care how much you eat. It's not a judgment about eating a lot or a little. I like to loosen the belt on Thanksgiving. I, I like to overeat. You know, it's a, it is a celebration of food, but 
It, no matter how much you do or don't eat, start with a calculator. Start with the portions that you're going to serve people because the amount of wasted food and wasted money goes really crazy. And that's why I wanted to talk turkey with you today. We are really getting to crunch time with your turkey. And we've already talked about the size of the turkey to buy and how much trim loss and how much weight loss. But I wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about the turkey today and do my little turkey routine. So I know that you like this. Hey, thanks a a lot. Hey, good to be here tonight, everyone. Uh, boy, uh, I flew in from Chicago. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, why did the turkey cross the road? Uh, he wanted to, people to think it was a chicken. But um, hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, why did the what did the turkey say to the computer? Uh, Google, Google, Google. Oh, thank you. But um, uh, uh, what did the turkey say to the hunter? Uh, quack, <laughs> quack, quack. All right, well, just one more. What do you get when you cross a turkey with a banjo? Uh, you get a self plucking turkey. Oh, it's it's it, it just won't stop. Uh, what do you do uh, when you cross a turkey with a ghost? Uh, you get a polter, poultry geist. Uh, uh, okay, all right, I'll stop. Look, <laughs> I have some serious stuff to talk to you about today with some turkey buying tips, some last minute turkey buying tips for you. And what I wanted to talk about the age of the turkey, the way that the turkey is classified has to do with its age. So a lot of people don't understand the labels that are on these turkeys. A lot of people think it is a suggestion for cooking them, but it is not a suggestion for cooking them. It, it is actually the age of the item. So let me give you some examples. Uh, First of all, if you see a free range turkey, it's not automatically better. You know, people want organic free range, but there's something that you need to look a little bit more deeply into because a lot of times it's the larger farms that can afford the, the inspections and the process to use the organic label when your local guy is doing the same things but doesn't get the inspection. So a free range turkey um, is a turkey that is going to be have some access to the outdoors. This doesn't tell you what it ate. This doesn't tell you, you know, what it was fed or how it was treated. It simply says that it has some access to the outdoor. It is not a wild turkey, okay? It's not a, a foraging turkey just because it's free range. Uh, the next, uh, so it, it doesn't, you're right, it doesn't say what it eats. The next is a fresh turkey. Now, because of the amount of bacteria, because, because of the visceration that goes on with turkey, removing the guts and so on, it's a very potentially dangerous product. And a fresh turkey, you might think, has never been frozen, right? But a fresh turkey has been frozen. And in the U.S., the FDA tells us that a fresh turkey can be held at 26 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius or above. Well, uh, to me, that's 26 is frozen, right? 32 or zero Celsius is freezing. So a temperature below freezing. But let me tell you why this is. Because water will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius, but the flesh of the turkey will not. So this turkey is kept at the lowest possible temperature to, to uh, prevent bacterial growth without making the meat solid. But here's the thing. Whose refrigerator, you know, is that precise, even on a commercial level? So a lot of times you do get these frozen turkeys. You think it's fresh, but the water expands within the breast when it freezes. And anytime water expands within meat muscle, it breaks down the texture. It breaks down the fibrous nature of it. Uh, the next thing is USDA grading. Now, look, th this they only grade the carcass. This is a big misnomer. This is only looked at for broken bones, pin feathers, uh, uh, bruises, things like that. It, it, a, a USDA turkey, just because it's a grade A turkey, it says nothing about the flavor. A grade A doesn't mean it's going to be delicious, okay? A grade A turkey means it has no broken bones. It has no tears in the skin. It has no bruises, things like that. It's a grade A. So don't think just because you have a grade A turkey, it's the most, most delicious turkey. It doesn't tell you what the breeding was. It doesn't tell you what it was fed. It doesn't tell you how it was brought up. Age classifications actually say more about quality than looking for free range, fresh, or going by a USDA. So turkey age classifications, and this is why I asked, do you know how old your turkey is? Because you might have bought a fryer roaster 
And this is a very young bird. A fryer roaster is under 18 weeks old. This is more tender. It has less fat. It, it's, it's a smaller bird. The next is a young turkey. And a young turkey is five to seven months old generally. This is tender. It, it has a better fat layer on it. And this is the bird that most birds are sold in the U.S. are young turkeys. And that's probably what you found. Unless you sought out a smaller bird, it would make sense. A smaller bird has had less time on the planet, I guess. Then there's a yearling turkey. And this is a turkey that is under 15 months old. This is a turkey. The older it gets, the tougher it gets. There's a more fat layer. There's a, a, a much larger bird, the, the results from letting it grow and feeding it for 15 months. Then you have a mature turkey. And this is the turkey that is over 15 months. This is the tougher turkey. This is the turkey with more fat. Uh, this is the turkey with a coarser skin. So, Chef Todd, are you telling me that to get the most tender, flavorful turkey, I should get the youngest turkey? I should get a fryer roaster just because it's so young and tender? No, not, not necessarily. This, this is all personal opinion. M many people will tell you that older birds, while the meat might be tougher, have a lot more flavor. I mean, what's going to go on at your Thanksgiving table this year, I know, is going to be a debate of white meat or dark meat. Some people hate the dark meat. Other people love the white meat. The dark meat has more flavor. Ooh, I don't like the texture, whatever it might be. And the same thing goes for the age classifications of your bird. So if you think your young fryer roaster or your young turkey might be a little bland, maybe next year or this year, if you're buying a fresh turkey, look at a yearling, look at a mature turkey to get better flavor. But now that's going to change the way you're going to have to cook your turkey. So the older the bird, the tougher, but a lot of people say that the, the better flavor to it. So when you start cooking your bird, you need to know how old your bird was when it made its way. I'm, I'm going to say it nicely when it made its way to uh, the, your, your dinner table. So when you cook the bird, consider pre-brining the whole bird. I am a big fan of getting a five gallon bucket and a combination of just about any liquids, flavorful liquids you want. I like to use apple juice. I put a lot of bourbon in it very often. Acidic item, put some apple cider vinegar. <coughs> that helps, <coughs> excuse me, break down connective tissue. That helps tenderize your bird. It gets moisture into it, right? It adds flavor to your bird. And with an acidic product, if you ever are concerned about bacteria or safety of your bird and cooking it to the right temperature, soaking it in some kind of acidic ingredient will make it actually safer as well. The other thing to consider is add the fat or the stuffing, not in the cavity, but under the skin. If you pull back the skin of the bird and get your hand in between the breast meat and the skin, and that's where you put your stuffing in there, that insulates the, the breast meat. It insulates it from losing any more moisture. And actually you get a lot more flavor for the stuffing. The other problem with stuffing the cavity is, is that it makes the bird number one, harder to cook because now it is a big, fully round, filled thing. And to get that heat to the middle of the bird takes so much more time than if the cavity were empty and heat can get inside as well. So your bird cooks quicker and your stuffing is safer. So if you brine it and stuff under the skin instead of the cavity, you've got a safer, a much more delicious <laughs> bird for sure. It's a lot easier and a lot safer. Uh, don't forget to use my bottom up cooking method. Those that roast your turkey for hours and hours and hours and go, oh boy, the skin isn't brown enough, and then turn on the broilers. That's like turning on the rocket boosters when you're already in orbit, all right? So brown the skin first. Go ahead, broil that skin. Start your oven up around 450 Fahrenheit, 500 Fahrenheit for the first 10 or 15 minutes. Get the outer. The outer is what cooks first. So get that nice and brown and then drop down to a nice low and slow temperature. So uh, browning first, then roasting is the idea. 
Throw away that syringe thing. Don't baste your turkey. This is such a silly myth. I don't even know where it started. But every time you open the oven door, you lose more temperature than squirting fat onto the top of, tur of the turkey that runs down to the bottom of the pan immediately anyway. <laughs> you know, it's so useless, the whole thing. Opening and closing your oven door is one of the worst things that you can do. So the temperature loss just is not worth it. And... Don't forget to cook with a, a temperature, a, a thermometer. Final, finished, internal temperature, 165 Fahrenheit, 74 Celsius at the thickest spot. So this is generally between the thigh and the breast or under uh, the breast meat and uh, uh, above the rib. So logically, if your bird is up to temperature at the deepest, thickest spot, then anything thinner or more exposed to the heat is going to be at least that temperature as well. So that's the idea. That's our talk in Turkey for today. Uh, just make sure you, that you're thoughtful about it, that, that you are applying cooking methods because carefree cooking, so much of carefree cooking really comes down to being thoughtful about your cooking process, about watching the effects of heat on food, seeing how things change, just throwing it in the oven and setting a timer is not nearly enough for, for cooking your bird. You, you, you need to consider uh, where you stuffed it. Uh, did you put maybe, if you don't have stuffing under the skin, how about fat under the skin, a compound butter, a, a sage and rosemary and thyme, compound butter under, anything you can do to insulate that valuable breast meat. And that's the whole idea uh, be trying, behind trying to get a whole bird done. You know, don't forget, it's a dry, convective cooking process. Putting something in the oven for multiple hours at a time is gonna dry it out. You can't stop it. That's why moist turkey is, is the holy grail for everyone because it's four hours of evaporating moisture. But if you can brine it or cover it in fat some way, you retain a lot more of that moisture. So talking turkey today, that's why when your turkey is an older bird, you might want to brine it to tenderize it. If your turkey is an older bird with tougher meat, you might want to consider even like a stewing method where you're adding a lot more moisture to the oven, a pan of broth, and add some steam. Now, it's not going to be as brown, right? Because steam prevents caramelization of sugars, but if you buy a mature turkey, you're probably going to want some steam in the oven. And that's what I mean by knowing how old your turkey was and how you're going to cook it. So it all comes down to how you apply heat to food. That's the thing. All right, so how's everybody doing out there? I'm so glad we had those technical problems earlier. I'm so glad I got them fixed. Facebook is sketchy today. It's, it's tenuous. Thank you, Zuckerberg, for letting us get together today. Thank you for flipping whatever switch you did that allowed, allowed us to get together. Uh, Kim O'Kane keeps uh, compound butter in her fridge. That's great. Yeah, put it under the skin. That's brilliant. James does compound butter too. Uh, Jerry is with us as well. Kim, uh, Kim is asking, how long do you soak the bird in brine? Uh, the longer you soak the bird, the more flavor that you will have. I keep a thermometer in there because, again, food safety, your bird, I certainly should have mentioned this, has to stay below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 6 Celsius, I think it is. So uh, if you got to go in there, if it's more than a day and you're not in a climate with, where your garage is really cool or have room in your refrigerator, you need to go in there with a scoop of ice every day and keep adding ice to it. Or I used to take my bucket and set it in another cooler filled with ice. So I didn't add the water to the brine. But the answer is at least a day. I, I, I would brine the bird overnight at least is the way I would do it. Kim, thanks for the question. Um, DD is finally on. Ivan is with us. That's good. Arlene is good. The video is with, uh, uh, ch -ch 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 yeah, Bob gets his birds from an Amish farm, man. That's the best way, you know, local, locally caught and done. That's great. Uh, ch -ch -ch uh, Michael's been brining his birds since Sunday. That's good. Everybody is with us. Okay. And then we had all those technical problems. That's cool. Hey, what's been going on in the Carefree Cooks community uh, this week? Let's check it out. Oh, it's the holidays, of course. Everybody's doing their holiday cooking. And first, Rosie is making Coquito. This is a Puerto Rican eggnog, and she does these as gifts for her friends at the holidays. It's another great benefit of having cooking skills and loving being in the kitchen is food gifts. 
What about giving of yourself? I mean, anybody can buy a gift card, right? But when, when you're giving gifts, food gifts of yourself, how cool, right? Uh, what's this? Oh, Sue is making turkey stock. I saw a lot of stock being made in our Carefree Cooks community this week. And you're smart. Now is the time to do it. Don't wait till the day. You need all day long to do that. So she used these turkey necks. Uh, and her mirepoix there, nicely just stuff randomly thrown in. I see some garlic. That should be a good stock. And there it is. She winds up with turkey stock. Uh, Linda is making paleo everything bagels. Normally, this would not be a holiday dish, but she stuck the little turkey toothpicks in it. So <laughs> it qualifies. But baking at the holidays, you know, if all the rest of the year you're not confident in your baking, but it comes out at this time of the year, don't you feel great? I mean, don't you feel great to be the one that brings the cake? Don't you feel great to be the one that lays out all those cookies and stuff? It's, it's pride. It, it, it's a pride time of year. Uh, Lauren is doing Thanksgiving in a jar for people. It is her. She's got her mashed potatoes in there. She's got some broccoli, I think. She's got all oh, it's turkey. Uh, think about that as a gift. Thanksgiving in a jar, but it's got to be warm still. Uh, she's also doing mini apple tarts. You don't have to make a big pie, right, and portion it out. What if you made little tarts? It's not that much more difficult. Oh, and she's doing cranberry tarts as well. Nice job, Lauren. Lauren's killing the kitchen. Um, look, it's not all about turkey this year. Anastasia is uh, got a whole bunch of salmon she's doing pellicle which is like a candied smoked salmon and I know uh, in the northwest here in the U.S. this is a delicacy and I love it myself I love any kind of smoked salmon candied salmon this is a holiday uh, a special holiday thing in the northern U.S., like I said, uh, uh, just I wish I had some. I'm rambling <laughs> because I wish I had some. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tony says it's his first flaky pie crust. This was an aha moment for Tony. It was uh, maybe a week or so ago, two weeks ago, when I did the two uh, pie doughs in Tuesday Talk Live. Just knowing that bigger sizes of fat gives you a flaky crust and smaller sizes of fat, like coarse cornmeal, gives you a mealy crust, a denser crust. It changes people's lives. So Tony was really proud of this pie. I'm proud of you too, Tony. Nice job. Uh, Diane is doing turtle cookies. My goodness, I want one of those as well. But look, let's not be so ethnocentric. You know, not everything is about Thanksgiving in the U.S. Not everything is about turkey because I love what a bear does. He's making mofungo for the holidays. This is mashed plantains. There's his banana tree in his backyard. Pardon me, his plantain tree, his own plantains, and they're poached in butter and garlic. Mofungo, what a great holiday dish, right? So it's not all about uh, turkey this holiday season. It doesn't have to be for sure. Uh, so who's joining us now? Uh, Michael is talking about rubbing mayonnaise on the turkey. Mayonnaise is a fat. That would work for us as well. Uh, turtle cookies, great. Yeah, nice pie, Tony. People are loving each other's cooking. Uh, Kim is making biscotti. That's another great thing to give away because it travels really well as, uh, as well. What temperature are you cooking at? I don't understand uh, that question. Sorry, Kim. Uh, dark meat, great for soups and shepherd's pie. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you one of the reasons that the dark meat goes in soups and shepherd's pie is because it generally is more like a stew meat. It, it needs a longer period of time and the moisture to cook. Uh, what about browning then broiling? Um, they're, they're the same. Like I wouldn't, uh, Kevin, I wouldn't uh, subject the turkey to direct, direct heat for the whole length of time. You'll definitely have a black turkey, but at first conductive heat and then convective heat. Uh, the other great thing about that is if you roast your turkey uh, with moisture in the oven, and then try and brown it. Like we said, moisture inhibits gel uh, caramelization of sugars. So you're never going to get a brown turkey. But if you browned it first and then started roasting it, you could put a pan of chicken broth or something in that oven to create some steam and it would already have been browned. It's another great idea. So yeah, that, that that's the way to go, Kevin. Becky's making her own cranberry sauce. Yeah, I, I got to post a video for everyone. Uh, don't buy the cranberry sauce that slides out of the can. Please, it's just way too easy to make fresh cranberry sauce and you should do it. Uh, <clears throat> good, good, good. Uh, looks like everyone. Uh, the shirt. Yeah, Kim. Oh, 
This is, um, yes, snowmen shouldn't cook. It's funny, isn't it, right? This is last year's Carefree Holidays t-shirt. And I don't know how many of you got it, but it's uh, it was a limited edition thing. It came and went for the holidays last year. So thank you for noticing my shirt, Kim. I appreciate it. I'm sure the next question is, is there going to be a shirt this year? Hey, if you like this video today and you think it can help someone with their turkey buying and their turkey cooking, please go ahead, like it, share it, send it to the rest of your friends and family so that we can all have a great holiday season this year. And my last parting word, fill your heart with thankfulness. I mean, let's not forget what Thanksgiving is about. Now, it's not just about eating turkey. It's not just about cooking. You really got to stop um, for a moment. At, at some point in the next few days, whether you're in the U.S. and celebrating Thanksgiving or not, just stop and say, I am thankful for. It lifts you. Trust me, it lifts your spirit. If you walk with thankfulness, if you stop and appreciate, oh my God, look how pretty that bird is. If you stop and say, what a beautiful sunny day and just repeat it to yourself, there's thankfulness. So when you're with friends and family this year, uh, when you're around the table, stop and say, I'm thankful for you and I'm thankful for you. And that's what I wanted to get to. I am so thankful for you. We have a community of thousands of people that love each other, support each other, that all have a common goal of great cooking and impressing people with their food. You, have, you wouldn't believe what my life is like. That I wake up in the morning and I have these emails and these comments on Facebook. Chef Todd, thank you so much. You brought our family together. Chef Todd, I now know how to make a flaky pie crust. Chef Todd, this is going to be the best holiday ever. Chef Todd, all these things, I'm humbled. To wake up every morning and get that feedback, I'm thankful for you, for every one of our carefree cooks. So before I get mushy again, uh, just uh, thank you so much for everyone. We've built such a movement here and, and your uh, love and appreciation of it and your uh, participation in it and your support of me just makes me want to support you more and more. So uh, if I don't get to talk to you before Thanksgiving in the U.S., we will be talking more and more about the holidays for all the rest of the world because it's Chef Todd Moore reminding you that uh, there's a method to your holiday cooking success.